Hi guys, this is Jen Curtis, postpartum fitness specialist based in Tel Aviv. Um, I want to talk to you today about crunches and why they are not an effective way of training the core, especially after having a baby, but pretty much for everyone, um, for 99% of people. Um, and they're really, really popular. They're really, it's really massive. Um, and especially here in Israel, I see so many um, so many trainers teaching different types of crunches and how the right way of, of, of doing a crunch and people are obsessed with them everyone's obsessed with core training and with um, um, and, and with ab training um, but the crunch is actually a really really I'm not saying that ab training is or core training isn't important it is and it should be a really important part of, of, of how you train after having a baby but it's not um, it, the crunch isn't an effective way of doing that and in order to understand why you need to understand first of all a bit of anatomy and physiology so um, in terms of anatomy um, let's understand what a core actually is um, and I've, I've covered this in um, in a different post um, but I'm gonna go through it again um, very quickly and most people think of the core uh, or the abs as as, as just these like uh, this, these six pack muscles with the rectus abdominis, um, which um, run from they, they go from your rib cage down to your pel uh, down to your pelvis, and uh, it, there's kind of two strips of them, and they're joined with connective tissue in the middle. And what they're predominantly responsible for is spinal flexion. So if I show you, it, if I show you from the side, um, what that looks like is the, these two muscles run down, or this, this muscle runs down from here to here, and it, it creates, it pulls, it, as it contracts, it pulls uh, the, the rib cage to the pelvis. So it looks like that. And you see my spine is bent or flexed. That's called spinal flexion, so it creates this movement. But that is not the full extent of your core. Your core muscles also include um, your transverse abdomini, your sorry, uh, and your internal and external obliques that run around here, um, and they they join at the at the sides of the six pack muscle, the rectus abdominis, and they also they run all the way around, in really simplistic terms, to your back, um, where if you if you if you were to cut someone in half like this and take a cross section, you would see that you know these two like rectus abdominis muscles, and then uh, this you know this strip of muscles going around the sides, and then at the back you have this. Um, you have your, your spine, which is surrounded by a whole chunk of like of, of, of musculature that supports that. Um, and this all works together as, as a kind of it's like a cylinder that's filled with your abdominal contents, all of your organs. Um, and when it contracts, it that all the muscles contract together to 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 kind of squeeze your midline in and and create extra to increase the intra-abdominal pressure um, as those abdominal contents push back against the the, the cylindrical um, structure that that pulls in like a belt um, or like a corset you can think about it like it's described as a corset in a lot of the literature but that's not even the extent of, of all of your core um, your core musculature, your core system. Um, you also have a diaphragm, which sits um, at the bottom of your rib cage, um, and your pelvic floor that sits uh, in at the bottom of your pelvis, um, obviously. And all of it is a closed system. It's a cylinder, and it's like a Coke can, and it's all closed. And when it contracts, it all contracts together to increase intra-abdominal pressure. And it's all about intra-abdominal pressure. So, you know, we we can we can take readings of muscle, muscle contractions and um, the core, there's more intra-abdominal pressure and the core is more engaged um, when you're standing up, for example, than when you're lying down. Um, or if you go and do a squat with no weight, 
um, that intra-abdominal that intra-abdominal pressure increases because all of those muscles uh, contract to to, to to increase that pressure uh, internally and stabilize your spine. Then as you start adding weight to a squat, for example, then the intra-abdominal pressure increases more and more and more. And this is how the core works to stabilize us through movement. Um, not just through movement of our actual core, but through movement of if I move my limbs around, if I move my arm around, my arms around, my legs around, my core fires first to stabilize that um, before um, I make these external movements away from the core. Um, so, um, so that's really important to, to kind of to, to, to keep in mind that that's how it works. And a crunch doesn't uh, imitate that 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 way that that um, that that kind of um, central way that the core works to stabilize us. The crunch just creates spinal flexion. Um, so when we think about core training, especially after pregnancy, we want to we want to do exercises that encourage our core to work as a balanced system and to contract um, in this kind of way, like a core, like a corset tightening around your midsection, um, uh, and I will make another YouTube video about um, the sorts of exercises that can do that. Um, some of them look like core training and some of them don't look like core training. So for example, if I take um, um, a weight uh, in one hand and, and press it overhead, if that's quite a heavy weight, I have to use my core to, to stabilize that um, movement and to not fall over to one side and to be able to, um, to reach my hand overhead. Um, so the reasons why um, there's kind of five main reasons why um, uh, why the crunch isn't good or isn't effective as as as, um, as for for core training, and that is especially after having a baby. And that is if you have diastasis. The first one is if you have diastasis recti. Um, then we talked about how that. Um, connective tissue in between the two sides of your core is stretched and it's compromised and it's weakened, loosened, however you want to call it. So if you do have quite bad diastasis recti, those two muscles that, that, that sorry, the, the, the two sides of the abdominus rectus that run from your ribcage down to your pelvis that contract like this, if they have a gap between them and that that connective tissue joining the two sides together and remember that it's not just these two like in isolation from everything else like you also have these muscles your your um your tva and your obliques pulling at, at that tissue like this especially when the intradominal pressure is increased so they're pulling like this and that can open that can create more tension on the tissue and, and 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 weaken it even further and stretch it out even further and if those muscles aren't aligned to be able to pull you in this way if they're kind of like bulging out like this then then they're not going to be able to pull in that straight line that they like to work in um, and it's going to create further tension on that on that weakened tissue um, and that can lead to bulging. You know, you see like pictures of women. I or I see it all the time when women do this crunch and it, the the belly kind of tends up. Well, that's the intra-abdominal pressure escaping through the weak link. So, um, so crunches are not an effective way of um, of healing diastasis recti, and in fact, they can actually make it worse. And um, the second reason is if you have pelvic floor problems, which is very common after having. Um, after after having a baby, you know, if you have incontinence, if you have prolapse, if you have any kind of pain, then doing this is like, you know, it's kind of squeezing that Coke can in the middle and pressure is going to bulge out either side. And if your weak, your weak point where the pressure kind of escapes isn't, um, isn't your, uh, the, the, the linear alba, isn't this connective tissue, but it's the pelvic floor, then that's going to put pressure on that and make it bulge and make incontinence and things like that worse. So, um, 
so that's obviously not a good thing. Um, the third reason is that it's posture, it's postural. A lot of women um, get into this very like, tucked position when they when they're pregnant. They have this big bulging belly, and to relieve their lower lower back, they they tuck their pelvis and they kind of like lean back to counterbalance that weight, and so they get a bit of a rounded upper back. Um, not just not just pregnant women, but um, but also like most men and women who haven't had babies. You know. You, they spend a lot of their lives sitting at a computer in this position and then a phone in this position. So when we go to the gym, we don't want to further train that position. We want to open up the other way. We want to stretch out these tight chest muscles that, that, that get wrapped, that get, um, they get tight and short in this position all day and we want to strengthen the back muscles and do rowing actions, do things that, that strengthen the posterior chain, all of the back. Um, so, um, and then obviously after you've had a baby, then you're holding a newborn, you're nursing, you're, you're in this like slouch position a lot of the time and then going to the gym and, and doing this kind of like crunch that reinforces that poor posture is it, not going to be helpful. So those first three kind of factors um, are actually how crunches can make things worse. And then in the last two factors are just how they're, it's just pretty ineffective. Um, so they don't really target all the muscles. Like you can never isolate any muscle in the human body, let alone in the core. The core is always working. So I'm not saying you're just using your 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 six pack muscles, but you're not using anything else. But it, it doesn't properly activate the core and it doesn't properly activate the TVA and you know these muscles that wrap around here like a corset. They, they actually, it actually brings your, your rib cage, because it brings your rib cage and your pelvis out of alignment, it actually turns the TVA off and, and, and you're not getting full activation of that, those corset muscles. Um, so it's just not, it just doesn't target all the muscles and it certainly doesn't target them in, in, a, in a way that's, that's kind of holistic and true to their actual, um, uh, their, 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 their their way of working together as a team. Um, and then finally, it's just not a functional movement. You never have to do, apart from getting out of bed in the morning, you don't really have to perform crunches and um, as, as part of your daily life. What you do have to perform as part of daily life is picking things up from the floor, pushing things overhead, um, pulling things towards you, um, getting up and down off the floor, lunging, squatting, things like that. Um, and the core has to stay, carrying heavy bags, um, picking up a stroller and putting it into your car, picking up babies. You know, these are the things that your core has to stabilize you um, during those actions. And that's the main function of the core. So whenever we're doing any exercise, can, it can actually be functional core training, uh, to use a sort of you know really popular term. Um, but um, but you know, that, that's the way that we want to train the core. We want to train the core to work as as a team, a balanced system where all of the muscles of that coke can come together and work in a balanced way and on pulling each other out of alignment or putting more emphasis on one than another if that's even like a possible thing to do we certainly don't want to get like reinforce this like crunched uh slouched hunched over position there's that we all know we know that's not good for us um uh, the last thing i want to say about it is that um uh is that there's no such thing as spot reduction you can't get rid of belly fat from doing ab exercises. Um, what we do through training of specific body parts is we can build muscle. And I say this to all my trainees that we can choose where we build muscle, but we can't choose where we burn fat from. So our aim through training should be to build muscle and burn, build muscle in specific areas in the body that we want to build muscle in and to, to burn fat all over. Uh, because we can't, we, uh, the body's going to choose where we put it from, uh, where we pull those fat um, stores from. So um, 
you know, I see a lot of people who want to get rid of belly fat, and so they tell me they started running and they do loads of crunches because they want to burn fat from that area. Well, that's not how the body works. That's not how the body burns fat. Doing crunches or planks or any other form of ab training, um, including any ab training that I would recommend, it isn't going to make you magically burn fat from that region. The same way that if you have, you know, if you if you have if you have big thighs but you don't have uh, much fat in your upper body, like me, working your legs isn't going to get rid of that. It's just going to help you build muscle on your legs. Or burning that. Likewise, if you if you store weight on your upper body and not on your lower body, um, what crunches can do the the good the kind of good thing about crunches. I guess you could say, or what they what they are appropriate for, is so if you're if you're a woman and you're already like 15% body fat, and um, or if you're a man and you're like less than 10% body fat, and and you're pretty lean, you're lean and you're quite muscular, but you you really want that like cut look in the abs, you know, you really want to be able to, you want to make those abs a bit more defined, you want them to stick out a little bit more, then then crunches and that kind of ab, traditional ab training can be pretty effective for that. But most of us have, including myself, have a little bit too much fat on the, on the, over that abdominal wall. I mean, we all have six packs underneath. The fat is about how much fat you have on top of it um, to be able to see those abdominal muscles. So, um, uh, so for most of us, it's just not relevant. You might as well just work on building muscle all, all over it. And I'll make another post about that. Um, so, there's no such thing as spot reduction and doing crunches isn't going to help you burn belly fat and neither is planks despite what any trainer tells you that it's just that it's just utter bs um so to conclude like I, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. this doesn't mean um that you should do any ab training um after having a baby or during pregnancy or like you know in any other um period of your life it just means that crunches are not an effective form of ab or core training um i'll make another post about the sorts of exercises that you can do um as a as effective core training um i hope this was helpful um get, subscribe to my page like the like this video um if you liked it and uh, any put any comments below um if you have any questions thanks very much bye